So there is this paper called A Clean Break that was written by Richard Pearl back in the mid-90s, I do believe 96. And this paper, uh, this, this little document, is crucial to understand the world that we're currently living in, okay? I mean, you have to understand this document. And this document, it's, it's basically the, um, the foundations for everything that has happened in the West. And let me explain it. The whole paper was written for the um, Israeli government, for the first Netanyahu government back in the mid-90s. And the purpose of it was to create a new geopolitical strategy for Israel. Not the United States, for Israel. And this new geopolitical strategy, the, the whole notion of it was, you know, instead of trying to negotiate and be nice with everybody and, and, you know, just try to, you know, calm things down and negotiate a solution to all the problems, you know, screw that. Let's have a clean break. A clean break. And the idea is you create chaos, chaos in the Middle East. You keep two friends. You keep Jordan and Turkey. And that way, Israel will have its border protected with Jordan as a friend, and it'll have you know, some foreign policy leverage with a friendship with Turkey, another Arab state, or quasi-Arab state at the time, now fully Arab state, uh, um, Muslim state. And um, because it is, you know, that's the whole point of Erdogan. That's why he's there. Anyway, um, and so the Israelis thought to themselves that, I mean, through this paper, the idea that Richard Pearl was pushing was that Friendship with Jordan, friendship with Turkey, and the rest of the Middle East, Iraq, Iran, all of it, Syria especially, chaos. Let chaos rule. That was the idea. And this approach was so radical that the Netanyahu government rejected it. They thought it was way too radical. You know? But you know who didn't think it was radical? The people in Washington. People like uh, Bill Kristol and uh, Robert Kagan. You know, at the, uh, uh, what was this, it's called, uh, the New American Century, the Project for a New American Century. You know, that, that very short-lived but very influential little think tank that spread its cancerous tendrils all over the place. You know? And those people, the Kagan brothers, because also Fred, who was a teacher at West Point and who taught West Pointers to be arrogant and hubristic. You ever wonder why the American military is so arrogant and, and full of just a contempt for everybody else? Well, there you go. They taught them that at West Point. You know? And Fred Kagan was in the middle of it, you know, giving a good, good heave-ho to that arrogant mentality. And that mentality that let chaos rule. That's a key issue of a clean break. Because this notion of letting chaos rule fueled all of the thinking of these think tanks during the 90s. And it found expression in the George W. Bush administration and the various wars that it got involved in, Afghanistan and Iraq specifically. And then later, in the Obama regime, Libya, Syria, all of that came from a clean break, from the notion that what you really want is not peace, not prosperity, not negotiations. No, you want chaos. You want misery. You want to inflict misery on the people. And you allow corruption. You encourage corruption because corrupt leaders are more easy to manipulate. And you create the conditions of misery so that the American regime can extract the resources from the Middle East without any objection from the local population. And of course, all of this chaos in the Middle East it's all premised on trying to make life better and easier for Israel. And so it accomplishes two tasks. It creates a better security framework for Israel, and it creates more natural resources, the more ease in the extraction of natural resources for the American regime. And this paper, A Clean Break, you got to read it, okay? I mean, it's kind of horrifying because you know why it's horrifying? Because... It's clear that the author doesn't care about the people that will, whose lives will be ruined by this uh, approach. The people in the Middle East, the people in Syria, the people in, in Lebanon, the people in Iraq, Iran, it, they don't care. They view other people as if they were, I don't know, animals, like cattle, you know, ripe for extermination. 
If they can't get something, if you can't milk these cattle, then just slaughter them. It doesn't matter. That's the approach of this paper. And a clean break is essentially the cornerstone of American policy. It matched up very neatly with Wolfowitz's doctrine of uh, the unipolar world and American exceptionalism. I mean, in a weird way, this a clean break, it fed into the arrogance of American exceptionalism and just let it blossom. It, it's, it's a hubris, an arrogance, a dismissal of other people that is breathtaking. I mean, it, it is really, you know, they say uh, pride goeth before the fall. Well, here we got a dollop of pride, of pride, of hubris, of arrogance. And it's the cornerstone of American policy, of American foreign policy. And what's going on with this proxy war, it fits in very neatly with a clean break and that whole mentality of causing chaos. Vladimir Putin called the United States the empire of lies. But see, you need lies in order to create chaos. So I beg to differ. I think that it's really the empire of chaos, chaos and misery. And you see, this kind of attitude, it will be punished. I mean, karma is a bitch, and karma always swings around. The United States will pay for this. And ultimately, it's the responsibility of the American citizens who have allowed this to happen, who have allowed this just nefarious doctrine, this evil doctrine, just chaos, creating chaos, deliberately creating chaos to the advantage of the United States and the state of Israel. Because that's the whole point of a clean break. You don't have to take my word for it. Go read it for yourself. It's easy to find. Just Google it. It's right there, you know? Don't ever take my word for anything. If you hear me say anything, just Google it and find out for yourself. Find out about it, read about it, and then get back to me. And I'm sure you'll be in agreement.